and welcome to DFS Coach Talk. It is Saturday, November 28th, 2020. I am Andrew Hansen alongside Shane Caldwell, and this is our wide receiver tight end show for week 12. And Shane, I've got the a big saga here to get into with Logan Thomas and, and tight ends from Thanksgiving in a minute. But how was your Thanksgiving? Uh, well, I'm a Lions fan, so <laughs> yeah, I had some had some good food. Yeah, I definitely got some uh, relaxation time, enjoyed watching the NFL games. But yeah, when you're a Lions fan, you know, and they're playing on national national TV in front of everyone and it goes the way it did. Yeah, it, it, it can be a little bit rough. <laughs> I'm, I'm a, I'm a uh, true Lions fan, though. I'm not a fair weather Lions fan. So <laughs> it's a, yeah, but other than that, yeah, Thanksgiving was great. Yeah, you know, I was really enjoying the games through a game and a half uh, because, I, you know, as as you know, I mean, we're GPP players, so we play yep. multiple lineups often. And I, I put about a dozen lineups in the FanDuel big tournament. And I had one alternative GPP lineup where I went a little bit contrarian. I faded Zeke and I used the Houston defense, even though I stacked Houston and Detroit, had Peterson in there, Duke Johnson. Of course, I had Fuller and, and uh, Watson. Um, and I had Hawkinson as my tight end, who of course had a nice game there in, in, in the, in the opener. And so this lineup uh, during game two, during the Redskins, uh, sorry, the Washington football team and, and the Dallas game, it actually went into first place in the big tournament. And it was the same, uh, 17 other people had the same lineup. So I was set to win 35 grand in a tie for first. And then all of a sudden Logan Thomas had a three yard rush. And it didn't seem like much at the time, but it put me back into ninth place, and I never recovered. I, that's where I finished 0. .02 points out of first. And so I was a yard away from first place. And wouldn't you know, a tight end had a game like Logan Thomas. I just still can't believe it, Shane. He had oh four catches for 20 yards and a touchdown. So if you lose to that, it's like, okay, you know, he had, he had that extra yard. He, you know, you guys win. But he also threw a 28-yard pass to McLaurin, and he had that three-yard rush on a yeah. on an option play on a third well, one. Well, you know I'm the Logan Thomas hype guy, so I apologize that he definitely ruined your Thanksgiving. Oh, he did. He uh, but it. Logan Thomas was a college quarterback, and he was converted yeah. to tight end. So running the a read option, run play, and a pass play was was nothing to him. It's a, it's actually using his skill set. Uh, better so I know brutal brutal though but congratulations because you still had a great win I know it's com that's really brutal when you're looking at that monster win but I was I was trying to encourage you said you still had a hundred times your value of entry fee in terms of what you won because you know you you won well over five hundred dollars on that lineup right. on you know basically a five dollar entry so I'm trying right. to look at the bright side but I know that you were that close and that's tough that's the tough thing about a two game slate there yeah I appreciate that but yep. it's just amazing I mean if he had one fewer yard passing or rushing or receiving my group would have won so if anyone is out there who had that same lineup please reach out to me on Twitter so we can commiserate I'm at I'm at uh, language Olympic. Shane is at DET Sports Shane. You can find all of us at DFS Coach Talk. Uh, we love to interact with you on social media. Um, so um, anyway, I had to get that off my chest since this is the wide receiver tight end show. Um, but anyway, back to the drawing board. We're going to do even better this week. And these wide receivers and tight ends are going to be key. There's a lot of expensive wide receivers we like. So where are you starting here, Shane? Yeah, I mean, uh, I'm going to start uh, up at the high end here. Let's take a look at uh, Keenan Allen again. Uh, Keenan Allen going against Buffalo. I mentioned uh, that I do really like that game here. And I like Keenan Allen attacking the middle of the of the Buffalo secondary, going against Teron Johnson, kind of moving around the form, formation here. And uh, I think that they're, they're underdogs on the road here, but I think they're going to get a ton of pass volume. It's going to be a pass-heavy game script. And Keenan Allen is pretty much uncoverable. Even though he's expensive now in that $8,000 range, I still think he smashes value in this game. Um, so I'm looking at uh, Keenan Allen in that nice shootout-type game in Buffalo, the Chargers in Buffalo. And I think that's their best shot of competing because I think Buffalo is going to light them up as well, which forces them into a pass game script. And Keenan Allen is going to be a target monster here. So I think he's worth paying up for again, even though he's expensive. Yeah, he has been an absolute target monster recently. So uh, he's he's usually pretty reliable in that department. Uh, 
How about that touchdown throw from Herbert to Keenan Allen in the end zone? That laser, though, that was impressive. Yes, you know, he snuck nice it catch in there. Too. He, put, yep. he put it right on him, didn't he? Yeah, <laughs> so he did. He caught it, though. So. Yeah. Well, uh, speaking of lasers and, and quickness, I like Tyreek Hill here. I, I'm going to pay up for him a bunch. And he's in that game against Tampa with the highest total at 56.5 on betus.com.pa. Um, and, again, if you look at what – uh, the Rams did against Tampa short, quick passes to Robert Woods, Cooper cup, and Hill will, will run a lot of those patterns and they find a way to get it into his hands. Uh, maybe he even gets a reverse, um, but they will get it into his hands multiple times around the line of scrimmage. Obviously he can get him deep as well, but I, I just like this situation for Tyree kill. And I think he's worth paying up for. Yeah, I'm going to go to the uh, the game there in Atlanta, uh, and uh, they're playing the Las Vegas Raiders, and Calvin Ridley looks like he's in a great spot here. Uh, Calvin Ridley, likely Julio Jones, either out or limited in this game. He's going to be the go-to guy here. I think Calvin Ridley's finally healthy, and he's in a great spot here in a in a really high score game, high score game, 53 over under on Bet US, and. Uh, the Falcons are underdogs here at home. They're going to have to air it out. Matt Ryan's going to have to sling the ball around a lot. And Kelvin Ridley against this secondary, I like the matchup. I love Kelvin Ridley, of course, as a, as a route runner, just this type of guy that's going to be wide open. Obviously, he's he's due for a huge monster game. I think you can get him at a little bit lower ownership because he's coming off an injury. He's not really done anything lately. He hasn't had any monster games. And I like his matchup against Trayvon Mullen and probably get some Damon Arnett as well in that uh, Las Vegas secondary. I think he can just torch those guys, and I think Matt Ryan will look for him er early and often, and he'll be a big part of this game, uh, shooting out and having a high total uh, there at home in Atlanta. So I look for Calvin Ridley to have a monster game, and I really like paying up for him this week as well. I do too. And I like another guy in that same price range, Michael Thomas, 7,400. And in that first outing with Taysom Hill, Nine receptions for 104 yards. I mean, that was the primary target. It was it. It was the two-man show. Got those short passes. Get it into Thomas's hands quickly. Let him do his his work. And you know, Thomas finally seeming healthy and giving us that you know wide receiver one type output that we've been waiting for. So, uh, you know, anytime you get Michael Thomas under 8K on DraftKings, you know, it's not like it's an incredible matchup against Denver. It's not a high total. But they are the favorites, and I think, you know, Hill is going to trust Thomas and go to him often. Awesome. Uh, yeah, the guy that – also another guy here in the uh, Buffalo game. Um, I mentioned in the quarterback video um, I really like Josh Allen this week. So I really like Stephon Diggs, his main target. Stephon Diggs has been one of the best wide receivers all year. He's expensive for good reason. Uh, but when you're looking at this matchup, and I see that Casey Hayward, the star uh, – Defensive back for the L.A. Chargers is out, so Stephon Diggs doesn't have to worry about coverage from him. He'll probably see some Michael Davis. Stephon Diggs moves all around the formation. He'll see some of these backup guys that haven't really played much all year. So it's going to be a big mismatch for Stephon Diggs against this secondary. And Josh Allen, I think, is going to throw a lot on these guys. And uh, they don't really have a, an elite pass rush. Uh, he'll have a lot of time. So I look for Stephon Diggs to have a monster ceiling game here as well. So that's where, why he's worth paying up for. He's pretty expensive, 7900 on FanDuel, you know, 7600 on DK. So I can see people maybe steering away from that a little bit, playing in Buffalo. But I think that the, the Chargers, uh, they're a little bit banged up on defense. Their best corner out. I love the matchup, and I love this game environment in terms of it being a really high score, and I think it's a shootout game, and I, I want a I piece of Stefan Dix in this shootout. Okay. Well, as we start to get towards the mid-tier options, I want to get some exposure to Robbie Anderson. He's only 6,100 on DraftKings, and we've seen the chemistry he has with Teddy Bridgewater, who is going to be back in the lineup, and Teddy Bridgewater's got that narrative, uh, the revenge game against Minnesota. Uh, total is 51.5 on BetUS. And Minnesota's secondary has been beatable all season. They've been a little bit better recently, but I, I think Bridgewater is going to have a, a very strong game, and I think Anderson's going to be his primary target. He can hit, hit him deep, get a couple chunk plays uh, to pay off that price tag. Awesome. 
And the next guy I'm looking at is kind of a middle price guy, and this guy's been a target monster. You know, if I if I tell you there's a guy you can play at, uh, you know, in the $6,000 range, and over the last three weeks he's had games with 20 targets and 13 targets, two out of the three games there, that you'd be like, hey, oh, that sounds pretty good, right? Yes. <laughs> uh, and last week he caught 11 of those for 145 yards, and that's uh, Mr. Cooper Cup here. Uh, and this, yeah, this guy's a baller. He, he looked great against Tampa Bay uh, last week. And uh, I think in this matchup against San Francisco, again, not the defense they used to be with all the injuries, uh, you can attack them in the slot against Jamar Taylor, their main slot corner. Cooper Cup has a huge advantage here. Um, so, and I think that, that, you know, this is an important game for the Ram to kind of keep pace in that, in that really tough NFC West division. So they'll be passing quite a bit here. I think you can really pass on San Francisco. Uh, it's a great matchup for Cooper Cup, no matter where he lines up, but especially in the slot here. And I think he's just reasonably priced for the guy that gets that type of volume. Um, and I think this is the week he can finally get a touchdown because it's been quite a few weeks since he's gotten a touchdown because you know he's getting the volume. So if he combines that, you know, 10 plus catch upside with, you know, ridiculous amount of targets and then he gets the touchdown and 100 plus yards, he's going to smash that, uh, you know, $6,000 range, uh, you know, 6400 to 6700 price for DK and DraftKings and FanDuel. So I think you can fire up Cooper Cup here in a, in a great matchup against the San Francisco 49ers. Yeah, lo- love the amount of targets he gets uh, for sure. All right, a little bit cheaper for me, a guy that I'm I'm really excited about this week, Jacoby Myers for the Patriots. They're hosting Arizona over under is 49 on BetUS. And he's got that matchup that we've been exploiting lately, the slot against Arizona. You remember that guy named Tyler Lockett who had 15 for 203? Yep, same matchup, but he's not the only one. Crowder has gotten them. Lamb had a big game against Arizona. Beasley just had a huge game a couple weeks ago against them. And, And Lockett, again, he got them both times he faced them. So Jacoby Myers is, you know, really the the number one target for Cam Newton. I mean, De, you know, Demir Bird has uh, done some uh, some good things. He had a good week against Houston last week. Myers didn't do as much last week. Nikhil Harry is back. Um, I think that'll allow us to get him at a little bit lower ownership. People see the down week last week, but I think that was just game plan. You know, they they took the pedal off the metal a little bit with Jacoby Myers after two big weeks in a row. Um, and Harry did play some in the slot. He played about half of his his snaps in there, um, but Myers played about half of his snaps in the slot. So I think they go back to him this week. Obviously a must win for the Patriots, and I think Belichick relies on Myers to get that done. Awesome. Yeah, they definitely will attack the weakness and, and uh, build a game plan. So you're, you're definitely on there with Jacoby Myers. Uh, here's a guy that is kind of interesting. He had a pretty good game last week. Uh, this is going back to the game in Atlanta. Is I'm looking at Nelson Aguilar. Uh, he's pretty cheap here. He's 4,900 over on DraftKings, 5,200 on FanDuel. It's pretty cheap here. I mean, he's their number one receiver. He he runs the most routes, plays the most, you know, plays the most snaps. Um, you know, he's been getting open, and Derek Carr really likes this guy. He hits him on big plays. He can get some run after the catch. So sometimes he has hard, difficulty catching the ball, but for the most part, he's He's played good. He's been their number one wide receiver. So I really like Nelson Algalor here going up against the Atlanta secondary, pretty suspect secondary. They're known for giving up big plays this year. Not a great pass rush. So you can you can really pair up Derek Carr as a cheap value option with Nelson, Nelson Aguilar, and that makes a really cheap stack there. So I like Al- Algalor here, more of a tournament play. Um, but I think he's going to he's going to have another big game here and they're going to pass more. Uh, the Raiders sometimes don't pass much in certain games. I think this is a game where they pass more just because Atlanta's a little tougher against the run. So with the volume, with Aguilar being their number one receiver, I think they get it done here in a good matchup in a very high scoring game. When you got a game that's 53 over under, that's looking really good to me. Excellent. Well, I'm looking for another value player, too, and. One guy who's in the mix for me is Keelan Cole. He's only 3600 on DraftKings. And when you're in that price range, you usually don't get a guy who already has four touchdowns through week 11, and Cole does. And big injury news with Jacksonville, as DJ Chark and Chris Conley are both out. So we've got Mike Glennon coming into the mix. Hopefully he'll look for some short passes to Cole in the slot where he plays 68% of his snaps. And again, you know, the slot 
uh, has been a way to attack Cleveland. Tyler Boyd has destroyed them twice. Lamb had a big game against them. Even Renfro paid off against them. So I think Keelan Cole at 3,600 is worth a shot. Awesome. Uh, here's a guy that's uh, very affordable as well. Um, going back to the Buffalo game here, and we got Gabriel Davis, who's a rookie, very talented. You know, you know, he's pretty explosive. You know, he's got good, decent size, and he's had some pretty good rapport with Josh Allen when he has played. Um, John Brown is injured and out again. So with John Brown out, uh, Gabriel Davis will be, uh, you know, a starting wide receiver. Buffalo runs a lot of three wide receiver sets. They spread you out, let Josh Allen sling the ball around. And again, you know, I talked about how uh, the, the Chargers have, uh, you know, Casey Hayward out. He doesn't have to worry about coverage there. So he's going to have a good, you know, he's going to have a good matchup here for Gabriel Davis. And of course, his price on DraftKings is pretty attractive there at $3,000. That might attract a little bit of attention. And then 4800 on FanDuel is not too bad as well. You won't find too many guys that are starters that have you know, decent upside there on FanDuel for 4800 So I think definitely if you need value, Gabriel Davis is the way to go here. And I'm projecting this to be a shootout, and I'm projecting for a ceiling game for Josh Allen, which means you can get a super cheap stack there uh, with Gabriel Davis uh, from Buffalo. Yeah, his price really jumped out at me as well. So he's in the mix for me. And if you want to pivot and get another option on DraftKings at 3000 I wanted to mention Andy Isabella. Definitely a GPP play at 3000 And the reason he's in the mix for me is because Larry Fitzgerald is out. And so in this matchup against New England, I think he could get a look here. He's going to get much, you know, more snaps than usual. And New England has shown some vulnerability to the deep pass. And that's where Kyler Murray likes to hit Isabella on occasion. He'll, he'll take that deep shot. So uh, if you want to uh, you know, pay down at DraftKings and not go with Davis... You could go with Isabella. So uh, speaking about paying down, let's take a break here and, and uh, uh, get some information on this terrific offer that we have exclusive to our listeners from BetUS. Hello, this is Coach from DFS Coach Talk. If you're looking to up your game in DFS and want to take it to the next level, and you're looking to also place some wagers on this weekend's action, I have the greatest offer for you that we have ever put forward here at DFS Coach Talk. All you need to do is go to betus.com.pa, use the promo code Coach Talk, all one word, no spaces, and deposit $149 for your first deposit in BetUS. With that deposit, you will receive a free membership for DFS Coach Talk from the day you sign up all the way until April 1st. So you'll get all a lot of our NBA action, the rest of the NFL season and PGA, and uh, be there for the beginning of spring training and baseball. So we would love for you to join us. And uh, also, BetUS will take that 149 and give you a 125% free play match that you can use also uh, to bet on the games. It is the best DFS provider and the best sports book in the industry. Can't miss this opportunity. We would love to have you join the DFS Coach Talk family, and we hope to see you very soon. Take advantage of this offer. We're going to definitely crush it the rest of this season, and you can do the same in BetUS. That's betus.com.pa, promo code Coach Talk, all one word. See you in there, and let's collect the money. Welcome back, and thank you again to BetUS for setting that offer up for us. Again, go to betus.com.pa. Use the promo code COACHTALK, all one word. Make that deposit for $149, and we'll get you into our Discord for membership for the rest of the winter, all the way until April 1st. Can't beat it. All right, Shane, who are the tight ends we need to consider? Are you willing to pay up this week for anyone. Yeah, so one strategy with tight end is you can pay up, um, and you can pay up for Travis Kelsey. He's in a good spot here that's by far the the highest, uh, you know, highest over under, highest implied total for Kansas City going into Tampa Bay here. So this should be a shootout. And one strategy is that you can differentiate yourself by paying up here. Travis Kelsey, very expensive. 
for for uh, a tight end, eight thousand dollars. Fanduel, seven thousand on DK. But you can create a big advantage because he has by far the safest, you know, floor and by far the highest ceiling of any tight end on here. So if he, you know, has a blow up game, which he's fully capable of, he's pretty much consistently done it the last three games. Uh, that creates a huge advantage at that position. Now, there is some value you're going to have to look at at different positions to be able to get up to Kelsey, and that's the difficult thing is the construction, the roster construction. But in the last three games, he's had 12, 12, and 10 targets. He's produced for over 100 yards, a touchdown in two out of three games, 20-plus points on, you know, FanDuel, DraftKings, even more than that. So you can see where he's expensive, but I think that he's going to match up good against the linebackers from Tampa Bay. And you can definitely you can definitely get at them in the passing game. I love his run after the catch ability, you know, uh, and I think he's going to be a critical point, a part of this passing attack for uh, for this game in a super high, you know, uh, over under shootout game. What was this? Was this the one that was 56 and 56 a half? 56 and a half. Yep. Yeah. So it's a great spot. Uh, so I think you can make an argument to set yourself apart by paying up for Travis Kelsey, even though he's expensive. Um, you just have to hit on some value plays elsewhere, though. But, yep, that's, so that's the first tight end I would look at as the, the high-end guy here. And you used a lot of words there with the tight end that you don't get to use very much this year with talking about over 10 targets and all that production and great run after the catch. So, um, yeah, Kelsey's always worth a look. And I'm willing to sp- – to spend up also, and I'm looking at Darren Waller for 6,000 on DraftKings in another shootout, 53 point total in the uh, Atlanta uh, Vegas matchup. And Atlanta is the number one matchup for tight ends this year in terms of overall fantasy production. They've given up eight touchdowns. We know how much Carr likes to go to Waller, and I'm going to get him out there in a bunch of lineups this week. Awesome. Uh, I'm going to go to uh, a familiar uh, guy here in that same game opposite of Kelsey. We're looking at Gronk here. Uh, so Gronkowski, he's looking like a pretty good target for for Tom Brady here. And, you know, it's interesting. They have those three good receivers, but you have to pay a lot of attention to those guys. Um, so that means Gronk can kind of hit you down the seam, and he's just a really big target. Um, so And he's a red zone threat. And Kansas City's not great against the tight end here and they're going to have to pass the ball uh they're probably going to be playing from behind most likely in a really high scoring game and uh on FanDuel Gronk is 6200 it's a little contrarian to pay that much for him but he could have you know a good game here and set yourself apart if these other high end guys don't hit and then on DraftKings he's a reasonably priced reasonably priced at 4400 so I think that's a nice value for Gronk so I think Gronk's going to have a big game here I know he's kind of old, you know, past his prime, but he's looked solid and he's just a big target for Brady. Obviously, Brady has great rapport with him. I think he matches up good against the safeties and the linebackers for, for Kansas City in a game where they're going to have to pass a lot. So I think you can look towards Gronk this week. Yeah, I think that's one of the best matchups against Kansas City that might go overlooked. Darren Waller's had two really good games against them this year, and the Denver tight ends combined for 10 receptions against KC. So I agree. I think Gronk can get it done. Another guy in that same price range that I'm looking at, Evan Ingram. You know, he's always in play for me because of the volume. In weeks eight and nine, he combined to to get 20 targets. His last game against Philly, it was it was a bit of a down week with only two two catches for 15. But this week he's he's getting Cincinnati number five matchup this season for tight ends. Uh, so Ingram is nice because he's only 4,500 on DraftKings. So you get that significant savings from from Kelsey and Waller. Awesome. Yeah, another guy that's kind of a mid price here uh, again is uh, playing. I've, I've been talking about a lot about this Buffalo game here. I have a couple plays from that game. We got a, a Hunter Henry here, and he's pretty reasonably priced. And Hunter Henry's been getting more and more targets. He's getting those red zone looks. He scored a touchdown the last couple games. He's had you know six or seven targets the last three weeks. So Herbert's definitely looking his way a lot more now. Uh, he's a guy that can produce from the tight end position. That's a pretty rough position here. So he has nice, you know, has a pretty decent uh, floor here and a little bit of upside. So I look for Hunter Henry. If they're playing, again, the game script, probably playing from behind at Buffalo, going to have to pass a lot. He can definitely get a lot of production. So I can see this being a big game for Hunter Henry. And Buffalo, again, is not really great against the tight end. A good matchup for 
for them. You can kind of hit those uh, Buffalo guys, uh, you know, right across the middle a lot as they're pretty good on the outside corners against wide receivers. So Hunter Henry, I think, should be funneled quite a few targets here in a, in a nice game script. So I think you can definitely fire him up and uh, you can stack this game and he could be part of that as well. All right, let's transition to a couple value plays here. And one guy I'm looking at is Jordan Reed. Now, he's a question mark because we're recording this on Saturday morning. So we're not sure if he's going to play. He's been missing practice with an illness. They say it's not COVID related. So we'll just have to wait and see. But if he if he suits up, uh, he had five for 62 in his last game against New Orleans. And, uh, you know, they are, what, six and a half point uh, underdogs against the Rams. So you, you got to figure Mullins will have to air it out. And uh, yeah, I think Reed is a decent option. I'm not thrilled about this game in general, um, but obviously they're going to score some points. And, you know, the Rams defense was just so strong last week, um, you know, shutting down the run. Uh, so I think San Fran's going to have to find a way to pass it. And I think Reed uh, could, you know, could receive uh, a lot of those targets from Mullins. Yeah, put them in that George Kittle role if we can keep them healthy for one game. That, right. that sounds good to me, right? That's all we need. Just one game, that's all we need, yeah, for uh, Jordan Reed there. Uh, I, I'm going to go uh, down to the value bin here, uh, down to a, a punt play. Sometimes you just got to punt the tight end position. I know it gets a little ugly down here in this price range. But I'm looking at Kyle Rudolph. I like the situation here. Good matchup against Carolina at home. Um, you know, and they are they are favored at home here. And uh, I think that uh, what's going to happen here is uh, Irv Smith looks like he's doubtful. He's probably not going to play. So K Kyle Rudolph would be the main tight end. You have a chance that Adam Thielen could be out in this game, which means maybe Kyle Rudolph gets a couple more targets if Adam Thielen is, in fact, out for this game. So I look for Kyle Rudolph to be involved in the passing game a little bit more. He's not the guy that has a very high ceiling, but he's certainly a big target in the end zone. Maybe he can finally get a touchdown because I don't, I think he, it's been a long time since he's had a touchdown since I think it was like week three. But if he yeah, if he can get a touchdown here and get get a little bit more work between the 20s because of the lack of Irv Smith and potentially Thielen uh, in a good matchup, I think he can hit it. And of course, his price isn't bad. He's 4,600 on FanDuel and on DraftKings. He's an impressive low price of 2,800. So it makes you feel a little bit better if, if he it does end up bombing. You didn't really pay that much for him. And you're able to load up on all these other guys that we think are in an absolute smash spot. So that's kind of part of that theory is that you're just trying to get like six to eight fantasy points somewhere around there from Kyle Rudolph. And if he catches a touchdown, then all of a sudden you're looking real good. Yeah, I think Rudolph is is a great option this week with that price. And if you know, if you want one more, I'll throw Tyler Eifert into the mix. He's only twenty six hundred on DraftKings. So if you want to pair up a Mike Lennon with somebody and you don't want to spend thirty six hundred on Keelan Cole, you can save an extra thousand and, and pair Glennon up with Tyler Eifert. He's got the number two matchup against uh, tight ends. Uh, Cleveland is the number two matchup. So, um, you know, Eifert kind of low volume. You know, he's not getting in the end zone a bunch. But at that price tag, if he does this week, then sort of like Rudolph, you're really styling. Who's the quarterback price. over there? Mike Lennon. <laughs> oh, there you go. Hey, yeah. he's a big, tall guy. He can find another big, tall guy for the tight end there. I like exactly. it. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Yep. I just had to remind There's people who the quarterback was. They shocked forget. the world. Yeah, yeah. it's not meant you. So. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Well, uh, if you want to see how we put our final lineups together this week, we'd love to have you as a member. What we do is we give out a full lineup on FanDuel that you can just plug and play in all of your cash lineups, and then also two GPP lineups that you can plug and play. And we give out uh, the DraftKings Coach's Clipboard with highlighted plays and pivots and the full Yahoo lineup. So go to DFSCoachTalk.com to pick up one of our memberships. Or if you want that tremendous special that you heard about, go to BetUS.com.pa. Use the promo code COACHTALK. Make your deposit there for $149. And then we'll invite you into our Discord and give out those lineups about 45 minutes before kickoff on Sunday. Shane, any final thoughts here on the wide receiver tight end show? No, I think it's a, we got some great selections here. Yeah, De just remind everyone, give us, a, you know, subscribe and like on YouTube. We appreciate the support, and we're ready for another great week here. And uh, appreciate you listening to our tight end, uh, tight end wide receiver show. And uh, 
definitely check out our running back show as well and our quarterback show. You said it. Uh, check those out. We're going to get you prepared to, to build your lineups. So on behalf of Shane Caldwell and the rest of the DFS Coach Talk team, I'm Andrew Hansen. Thank you so much for joining us, and we'll see you on the next podcast as we look to crush it in DFS.